All right, you've chosen your topic, you've taken a position, you've written your thesis statement, so now it's time to start the research process. The research process is the most important element of your persuasive writing or public speaking project because the research process will help you determine what your three arguments will be. It's important to note for this project that you're going to need three different sources of information, minimum. You can have more, but in your Works Cited page, I should definitely see three different sources. On the screen, you see an excellent resource that I found from the Kentucky Virtual Library website, which outlines in six steps how to do an a research paper, or persuasive essay in your case. I really like this document because it really outlines what you should be doing. You've already done stage one, which is plan. You've already started planning your persuasive essay. Uh, you plan in the sense of what's your topic and what your thesis statement is. The next step in planning is to define the key words that you want to be using for your Google search. So once you've got your keywords, you're going to start searching for information. Now you can always go to a library. The library has books, they have magazines, but I'm sure most of you are going to use the web to search for information, to search for websites, to search for newspaper articles, documentaries, um, you can even start with Wikipedia. It's a great place to start to get some background information. Remember that when you're doing your search and when you're finding your information, take notes. Take notes about some of the data that you found, some of the facts that you found, some of the bibliography, uh, bibliography information which will help you for your Works Cited page. After you've taken notes, after you've gathered all the information, it's time to figure out how you're going to use this information. And that's what I'm going to be touching on in the next uh, few moments. Okay, you need to go through this information. What can you use this information for? Can you use it for your background information in your introduction? Can you use a few documents to, be, to formulate your argument number one, argument number two, argument number three? So you really need to go through the information and organize it. Uh, in some instances, you're going to paraphrase it in your own words, which becomes an indirect quote. Sometimes you're going to decide that there's a really important quote that you want to use. Uh, so you're going to really go through the information. You're going to put it in order. What's your strongest argument? What's your second strongest? And then finally, your third strongest. After you're done, Going through your information, taking notes, organizing your information, it's time to start writing. And I will talk about that later on this week uh, so you can get started. In my opinion, one of the best search engines available is Google. So you're going to want to do a Google search to try to find the information that you're searching for. You're looking for background information that you'll use in your intro. You might be looking for hard facts, statistics, years, or real life examples to show what you're trying to say. One of the things I like to do when I'm searching on Google for information is to use quotation marks. Quotation marks will tell Google or ask Google only to search for documents that contains that exact phrase. Uh, so in this case, I'm looking to support the idea that the Winnipeg Jets are the best NHL hockey team. So I'm trying to find their strengths. So I'm asking Google to search for documents that will pull up uh, articles or websites that focus on their strengths. Now the 2013-2014 NHL hockey season has been somewhat tough for the Jets. Nonetheless, this document talking about the Jets future came up. So if I was doing this as my topic for my persuasive essay, I would click on this link, which then brings me to this article that talks about the defense and how it's the, the future of this hockey program. So I would start reading this document and try to find ideas or information that I can build a body paragraph around. 
Since only four documents showed up on my initial Google search, I'd probably like to go back to Google and do another search. Perhaps this time I'll just type in Winnipeg Jets and I'll take out the strengths and see what comes up then. One of the first sites that comes up following my Winnipeg Jets Google search is this Wikipedia page. Now let me be very clear. Wikipedia is a great place to start searching for information. It's a great place to get situated and it's a great place to look for more information. But it's not necessarily a great source that I should be quoting either directly or indirectly. What I really like about Wikipedia is that at the bottom of the page it brings you to a list of references and many times these references contain hyperlinks to websites, articles that can be very useful. These links can be quoted directly or indirectly in your body paragraphs and these links can help you construct strong arguments. For instance, this link right here can take you to NHL.com, can talk about uh, when the Jets moved, their pa the previous team that they were. Uh, it might be able to give me some background information because not everybody knows about the NHL and not everybody knows that the Winnipeg Jets were once the Atlanta Thrashers. Other links can take you to other documents that are very useful like Sports Illustrated, the Winnipeg Free Press, which is a newspaper, uh, and the Montreal Gazette. These are the type of documents that you want to be uh, quoting either directly or indirectly in your body paragraphs, not Wikipedia. Once you find your website or your newspaper article, it's now time to actively read that document. Why do I say actively read? Well, because you're searching through that document to try to formulate your reasons. Notice how I said that you use your information to come up with your three reasons and not the other way around. A lot of us have this bad habit of coming up with our arguments first and then searching desperately uh, for information that supports what we're saying. Don't do that. Don't write your arguments first and then try to find evidence to support what you're saying. Find the information and build your arguments from there. Now what do I mean by that? We look at the article on the right which talks about the Winnipeg Jets new coach. There's a line in there that talks about the Jets youth and size. This could help me come up with a body argument. I could focus on their upcoming potential, some of the players in the minor leagues. Uh, I could explain that, I could name them, I could find some quotes that would support this argument. In this video, you saw two examples of information. You saw a Wikipedia page, which would be excellent as a place to gather background information and to find uh, more legitimate or stronger sources of information. You also found a newspaper article, which would be an excellent place to build a potential argument. You received a handout which should help you keep track of your information. It's important to note where you got your information and the date in which you got it. Some important information that you should note on this page is the URL address, the title of the website or the title of the newspaper article, and its author, if available. This information will be useful for both your parenthetical references, so in your body paragraphs, and at the end for your works cited page. On the screen you can see an example of a works cited page which is located at the end of your persuasive essay. Remember there's a document in the Edmodo file which will tell you how to build your works cited page. I'll also talk about it briefly in class. Notice how the works cited page is in alphabetical order, that the first line is not indented, so that's your first source. However, if your uh, information is long and it has to go on to a second line, that line is indented. 
Uh, on the page you also have other key points that I'll let you look at on your own time and that you can read more about on the website that I've provided for you. So again, remember, write down all the available information that you can on the handout that I've given you. If you have more than three references, please use a handout. Keep track of your information. Keep track if you're going to use a direct quote or an indirect quote. If you have any questions, please post them on Edmodo and either myself or maybe one of your classmates will get back to you.